record. Good. Okay, so <coughs> I remembered. Okay, so if we have a function which is positive, decreasing, and continuous, and we have a sequence that agrees with that function at all integer values, okay, then <coughs> we can consider two different uh, two different summations. The sum from n is 1 to infinity of a n, right, and this, the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x. So, someone remind me. Okay, as for the first thing, right, what is the difference between a sequence and a series? So first off, tell me what a sequence is. It is, a, it is a list of infinitely many numbers. That's what a sequence is. Now, what is a series? The attempt to sum them all up. It's an attempt, right? Some series converge, some series diverge. Okay, good. Now, this, what is this? This is an integral, right, an integral, which means the area under the curve, because f is positive, okay, the area under the curve between 1 and infinity. So, in particular, we visited this kind of integral for the first time a few, a few uh, lectures ago. What kind of integral is this called? This is called a what? An improper integral, right, which is why we talked about it, okay, a few lectures ago. So these two objects, these two summations, on the one hand, summing the attempt to sum a sequence, okay, and on the other hand, the attempt to accumulate all of the area under a curve between 1 and infinity. These two things either both converge they either both converge or both diverge. Okay, so then if you have a, a continuous positive decreasing function and a sequence which agrees with that function at every integer value, then the corresponding series and improper integral from 1 to infinity have to both converge or both diverge. So, there is something that this, that this remark does not say. Okay, so what is it that is not said here? Okay, so first off, one thing that, that's not said about either one of them is it doesn't tell you what either one of them converges to. It doesn't say that the series converges to, to some particular thing. It doesn't say that the integral converges to some particular thing. But more importantly, what also does it not say? The primary bit of confusion that students have here. It does not say that they converge to the same thing. It does not say that they converge to the same thing. In fact, except in very spe special and specific circumstances, they almost certainly will not converge to the same thing. Okay? So I'm going to say that here. So then note. <laughs> okay. The series and integral do not generally converge to the same thing. If they happen to converge at all. What this is saying, and all that this is saying, is that if all these conditions are met, then they both converge or they both diverge. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate that this is, uh, this is a fact in a minute, okay, but I want you to understand the way that this will be used. Is I will pre present you with a series. And then you look at that series and you say, ha, huh, that looks like something I could integrate. And then you verify it meets all of these conditions and you integrate it, the improper integral. And then you say, ha, huh, well, the improper integral diverges. So what must be true about the series? Also diverges. Okay, or you say, hey, that looks like something I might be able to integrate. Or maybe the question says, use the integral test. <laughs> you know, however you arrive. Okay, and then you, s then you verify, ah, well, the corresponding function would be continuous and, de and positive and decreasing, and then I evaluate the improper integral. The improper integral converges, and therefore, what about the series? 
also converges. Okay, so does everybody see the way it's going to go? The usage of the test. Okay, so now let's verify, <coughs> let's verify that this is actually a fact. Okay, so any questions before we get to the verification of this? Okay, <coughs> so a little bit of proof. So let's start by drawing a picture, because at least in my mind that's where the information is seated. Okay, so let's draw some kind of canonical looking function that is that is positive and continuous and decreasing. <coughs> okay, and the function goes infinitely far to the right, but I'm just going to stop it there and we can imagine it goes further. Okay, so then now I'm going to mark out each one of the integers. <coughs> Okay, so now remind me, we're dealing with two kinds of sums simultaneously. What is the integral? How did we, so what, what, what does it mean with respect to this curve? It's the area under that curve. And it's the area under that curve. <coughs> okay, and how did, we, how did we define the integral in the first place? How do we get at it, the Riemann definition? A sum of infinitely many infinitesimal rectangles, right? So we said, okay, we're going to chop up the area into rectangles. Okay, then we're going to let the number of rectangles become infinite, and the, the width of the widest rectangle is going to go to zero, blah, 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 blah. So in particular, part of the formulation given in the book okay, is actually a formulation by a guy named Darbo, but for some reason the author doesn't talk about Darbo at all. Darbo talks about, <coughs> okay, well, we're going to consider two, uh, two sums in particular, the lower sum and the upper sum. And if the lower sum converges, and if the upper sum converges, and if the lower and the upper sum both converge to the same thing, then it's integrable. So do you remember the concept of lower and upper sum? Okay. So, <coughs> now, I'm going to highlight all of the sequence values, all of the sequence values in green. Oop. So there's a sequence value, a sequence value, sequence value sequence value, sequence value, sequence, sequence, sequence. Okay. Now, let's consider this particular interval that we're looking at. This one I've deno uh, denoted with a green bracket. <coughs> Where is the highest value of the function in this interval? at the left endpoint. Okay, and where is the lowest value in this interval? The right endpoint. What about, is there anything particular about this interval? Or is it true for every one of the intervals? It's true for every one of the intervals. Now why is it true for every one of the intervals? Because the function has a particular property, because it is decreasing. Right, so that was a property that we used a lot in Calculus 1 when I wanted you to actually do a sum. I'd give you a function which is increasing or decreasing, okay, because then the selection of the, of the highest point and lowest point is triviality. Right? It's always the left end point or the right end point, wh whichever I gave you. So notice that in any interval, the highest point is the left end point and the lowest point is the right end point. Okay, so then for that reason, the upper sum and lower sums are very easy to reckon. I will show them to you now. Okay, so then the lower sum right, always looks like this. So that means that we're always evaluating at the right endpoint. And naturally, the lower sum is less than the integral, right? <laughs> less than the true integral because we're missing a little bit of area. Okay, <coughs> similarly, similarly, the upper sum is what you get when you evaluate at the left endpoint instead. Right? And the upper sum is an overestimation of the integral. Right. 
Okay, so then <coughs> I'll color in one of the rectangles just so you can see it, right? This one is the, the lower rectangle. Okay, and then the upper rectangle is the pink part plus the gray part. Okay, so now just imagine that I filled in all the rest of them. <coughs> so now what we need to do is we're going to write down what is, okay, the, what is the upper sum and what is the lower sum for this particular, <coughs> for this particular uh, partition. Okay, now this here, this is x is 1, this is x is, t uh, not x, well, okay, x or n or whatever. So I'm just going to write 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So the upper sum is the sum from n is 1 to infinity of what? <coughs> so what is the height of the first rectangle? It's F1, right? What is the height of the second rectangle? F2. What is the height of the third rectangle? F3. Okay, so then generally speaking, it is Fn, and then multiplied by delta x, but what is delta x for this particular partition? It's 1, right? So this is the sum from n is 1 to infinity <coughs> of just Fn which is to say it is F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus dot, 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 dot. Okay. So then notice in particular that this is the same as A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus dot, 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 dot. So this is the sum from N is 1 to infinity of AN. <coughs> Okay. Now we want to know, well, what is the lower sum? <coughs> so what is the lower sum? Okay, so in this case, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of... Now look at the lower rectangle. <coughs> look at the lower rectangle. What is the height of the first lower rectangle? F2. Okay, so what is the height of the second lower rectangle, this lower rectangle? F3, and then F4, and then F5, and blah, blah, and they all have width 1. So the lower sum is F of n plus 1 delta x, <coughs> which is the sum from n is now, I'm changing the index, so I'm going to write this part in red so you don't miss it, from n is 2 to infinity of Fn, okay, which is <coughs> F2 plus F3 plus F4 plus dot, 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 which is, for the same reasoning as above, the sum from N is 2 to infinity of An. <coughs> Okay, so what I'm saying is that we have this integral. The integral, on the one hand, is less than this sum. It's less than that sum. And on the, on the other hand, the integral is, is greater than this sum. So what is the difference between these two? Okay, the difference between these two is the constant value, A1. Right, so this, right, this, this part, this infinite box, is this sum. And so what's the difference between these two sums? The area of the first rectangle. Okay, the area of the first rectangle. <coughs> so, now, what this is saying, what this is saying is that the sum from n is 2 to infinity of a n is less than or equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx 
is less than or equal to the sum from n is 1 to infinity of a n. <coughs> okay, because the lower sum is less than the integral is less than the upper sum. Okay, so now let we're going this is a, a sequence of inequalities. We need to demonstrate that this is true. So then the first thing I'm going to focus on is this this inequality. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> SK is equal to, using the notation for a, a sum, is equal to the sum as from n is 2 to infinity of, no, excuse me, the sum from n is 2 to k of a n, which is to say that is a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus dot 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 all the way up to a k. So that is to say SK is the first k is the sum of the first k terms from the first k minus 1 terms from 2 to k. Okay, so now tell me about sk as a sequence. I'm looking for, for an adjective. An adjective that begins with m and ends with onotone. It's monotone, right? Good. Okay, why is it monotone? Why is it monotone? So, in particular, why... What is SK plus 1? SK plus 1 would be the previous SK plus what? Plus AK plus 1, right? So, the, the next SK is obtained from the previous SK by adding something. Now, we're adding AK plus 1. Now, what is the SIGN of AK plus 1? It's positive. It's positive. So SK is monotone increasing. So SK is monotone increasing. So now we need two things to show. Okay, th the very most powerful theorem we have about sequences. We need two things to show that a sequence is convergent. One of them we have just demonstrated. If the, f if the sequence is monotone, if the sequence is monotone, increasing, and it is what, then it converges. And it is bounded above, right? So if the sequence is monotone, increasing, and bounded above, then the sequence increases. Or then the sequence converges. So, if the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx converges, then SK is monotone increasing and bounded above, which implies that SK <coughs> converges. Okay, now what does that mean for the original question? What was the original question? What do we want it to show converges? The series, right? But what is the lim limit of the sequence here? It is exactly the... the series. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad that everyone's paying attention. So then, therefore, the, the sum from n is 2 to infinity of a n, which is by definition the limit as k goes to infinity of s k converges. Okay, so what is it, how far are we into this now? So what I've said is what we have all together as a community <laughs> have said is that if the sequence and the function share all of these properties, if the integral converges, then the series converges. Right, but we, I, we need to show that it is the reverse is also true. 
Right? So that is to say, if the, if the series converges, then the integral must also converge. If the series converges, then the integral must also converge. <coughs> okay, so now... <coughs> now assume that the series converges. We must show that the integral converges. Okay, because we did it the other way around. We said, assuming the integral converges, the series converges. Now we need to assume the series converges and show that the integral converges. So this I'm going to assign to you as a take-home quiz question. Okay. <coughs> so, any questions about this, this method here, the integral test? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is a simple example. Okay, so for example, the sum from n is uh, 1 to infinity of n over n squared plus 1. Okay, so from now on, this is currently the, the thought that you have. So first, you ask yourself, is this a geometric series? So is it a geometric series? Is it geometric? <laughs> the answer should be immediate and loud. Is it? No. <laughs> no, it's not a geometric series. Okay, the next question you should ask yourself. Can I use the nth term test for, for what? For divergence. Can I use the nth term test for divergence? So what is the limit of the nth term? for this series. You should be able to look at it and see the nth term immediately. What is the limit? Zero. The limit is zero. So what does the nth term test tell you? Nothing at all. And it tells you nothing at all. So this isn't a geometric series. This isn't... Uh, I can't use the nth term test for divergence. So then, taking that together along with the fact that we're in the integral test section probably leads you to believe that we should use the integral test. Okay, so you should announce to the world, especially the greater, that we're going to try the integral test. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to say what the function is. So what function are you going to use? f of x is x over x squared plus 1. <coughs> x over x squared plus 1. So now you have to demonstrate that you actually can use the integral test. So what requirements are there on this function? It has to be what? Continuous. And what else? Decreasing. Decreasing and positive. Have to have these three properties. Continuous, decreasing, positive. So all of these things must be demonstrated. So first, is f of x continuous? <coughs> so is it? Yes, right? And I just, that's obvious, right? So why is it obviously continuous? <coughs> because x squared plus 1 is greater than 0. Right? The only way it could have a problem is if the denominator was 0, but it's impossible for the denominator to be 0. Okay, second, is f of x positive? So is it? Okay, so in particular, where does it need to be positive? After one, right? So yes, f of x is positive for x greater than or equal to 1. Okay, that's obvious, because the numerator is positive and the denominator is positive, so the ratio is positive. Now, 
the actual question that actually requires a little bit of work is f of x decreasing. So how do we show that a function is decreasing? Calculus, right? So we need to compute its derivative and show that the SIGN of the derivative is what? Negative. Okay. <coughs> so then, uh, the derivative of a quotient, right? Low d high minus high d low over low squared or whatever. That's the way I remember it. Low d high. So then, uh, what? 1 multiplied by x squared plus 1 minus x multiplied by 2x over x squared plus 1 squared. So then after simplifying the numerator a little bit, what? x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared <coughs> over x squared plus 1 squared which is yeah 1 minus x squared over x squared plus 1 <coughs> squared okay so now we need to find the critical numbers so is there anywhere that the derivative is undefined no is there anywhere the derivative is 0 Yes, at x is 1. Okay, why am I not including the other solution? It's not in the domain, right? We're not interested in what's happening at x is negative 1. Okay, so then now we plot what we found. It has just one critical number at x is 1. So I need to choose a point to the right of 1, so what's something to the right of 1? 2, excellent choice. So then, <laughs> so then the derivative evaluated at 2 is uh, what? 1 minus 4 is negative 3 divided by uh, 5 squared, which is 25. So then what is significant about this number? It's negative. So what does that tell me about the slope of this function? it's sloping down and therefore it's always decreasing. Okay, so then <coughs> write a little conclusion here. Not this one, this one. Okay, so you can conclude now. So f of x is decreasing which implies we can use the integral test. <laughs> Great. So I'd like to point out that we have not used the integral test yet. <laughs> right? Right. All that we've done is we've verified that, yes, in fact, is, it is legitimate to use the integral test. Okay. So understand the way that this goes. This opens up a whole line of questioning that I can give you. Right? I can give you a, a series that looks like you can use the integral test but actually you can't, and I'm trying to bait you into using the integral test. No, I'm not trying to be evil. I'm trying to test all of the, all of the permutations of the questions, right? And I'm announcing my intentions to you. Right? <laughs> I'm announcing them to you. Here they are. Okay, so let's use the integral test. So we want to compute this, the integral from 1 to infinity of x over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, so this is an improper integral. This is an improper integral. So recall the strategy. So we're going to compute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b of x over x squared plus 1 dx and I'm going to call this big F of B which is to say that big F of B is equal to the integral from 1 to B of x over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, so now I'm going to evaluate this where B is 
is some p some positive number that's greater than one. <coughs> okay, so then how do you proceed on this integral? So how do you go further? A u substitution. So I'll say u is x squared plus one. Uh, in this case, du over two is dx. Uh, excuse me, is x dx? I guess I can evaluate the limits here. U evaluated at one is two. U evaluated at b is what? b squared plus one. So then, after this transformation. <coughs> f of b becomes what? One half the integral from two to b squared plus one of one over u du. Okay, so what is the antiderivative of one over u du? Log of the absolute value of u. So half log absolute value of u evaluated from 2 to b squared plus 1. Okay, so then after plugging this in, half the log of b squared plus 1 minus the log of 2, like so. So this is f of b. Okay, so that's the area under the curve between 1 and b. So in order to find the, the original integral, now we need to allow b to what? To do what? B, b needs to go to infinity, right? We're letting b go all the way to the right. <coughs> so the integral from 1 to infinity of x over x squared plus 1 dx is the limit as b goes to infinity of this expression, f of b. And so the question is, is well, what do each of those terms do as b goes to infinity? So what does the log of 2 do? Nothing, right? It stays the log of 2. Okay, what does b squared plus 1 do as b goes to infinity? It goes to infinity. So what does the log of an argument which is going to infinity do? Also goes to infinity. So this diverges. So the integral diverges. Have we answered the question? No, not yet, because the original question was about what? It wasn't about an integral. It was about a series, a series. So we have proposed a function. We showed that the function was positive, continuous, and decreasing, and therefore the use of the integral test is legitimate. Then we said that this integral diverges. After all of this work, correct work, you still have not answered the question. What is the answer to the question? The series diverges. Therefore, the series diverges. So understand, it's very important for you to write a conclusion. If you don't write a conclusion, even after all of that flawless work, the only thing the grader can assume is after all of that work, you came to the end, and then we're not able to make a conclusion. Okay? So any question about this example? So, in this, in this class, you could say that. That would be fine. It's sort of, I would say, like slang. Right? Sort of like it's okay for... It's okay when my young child messes up to the verb to be, right? I am, I are, you know, this gets it kind of messed up, but it's like slang, right? So I would say writing equal to infinity is a little bit like slang. <coughs> Okay, because strictly speaking, infinity is not a number in this class. <coughs> okay, so other questions? Okay, so now, when we were talking about improper uh, integrals, improper integrals, I very carefully went through a very specific integral. Hey, does anyone remember, in fact, it was a whole family of integrals. Does anybody remember that family of integrals? 
What was it? The p integral, right? The p integral. So corresponding to the p integral is the p series. Okay, so now that's what we're going to talk about. P series. So here's the p-series, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p. Now according to the integral test, according to the integral test, we can compare this to with the function f of x is 1 over x to the p and the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx. So that's convenient because we know exactly when the p integral converges. Right, so this thing here, this is the p series. And this thing here, this is the p integral. Okay, so we already established that the p integral converges exactly when what? Some condition on P. Exactly when what? Okay, not less than 1. Greater than 1. Exactly when P is greater than 1. Okay, that's when it converges. Okay, therefore, whoa. Therefore, the P series converges exactly when what? <coughs> when p is greater than 1. Right? Because the function 1 over x to the p is continuous and it converges to 0 and it is decreasing and therefore by the integral test these two summations the improper integral, the p integral and the p-series must have exactly the same convergence or divergence, whatever the case may be. They must simultaneously converge or they must simultaneously diverge. Okay, so that's good because that gives you a whole class of series that you can just immediately just say, and therefore that one converges because it's a, a p-series. Okay, so for example, <coughs> the sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Does it converge or does it diverge? It diverges. Right? This diverges, right, you can compare to the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx, which is a p integral, with p is what? 1. So this diverges. So the series from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverges. Okay, so this series is quite famous. Okay, so who knows the name of this series? Starts with H. Harmonic, right? This is the harmonic series. And the harmonic series diverges. Okay, now I'd like to point out something that's kind of, I find that students get, get this kind of confused a little bit, so I want to bring it out now, hopefully not to confuse you, but to keep you from being confused later. So now I have a question. Describe to me again what is the difference between a sequence and a series. So what is a sequence? An infinite list of numbers. A list that has infinitely many numbers in it. Now, what is a series? Yes, it is the attempt to sum such a sequence, such a list. So now, this right here, the sequence, does the harmonic sequence converge? Does the harmonic sequence converge? Yes, the harmonic sequence converges, obviously, to zero, right? What does 1 over n do? It goes to zero. Does the harmonic series converge? 
No. No, it doesn't. You try and add up all those things and it diverges to infinity. Infinitely big. Okay, so on the one hand, a sequence can converge and even to zero. But that doesn't say anything about the series, the attempt to add up all those numbers. Okay, <coughs> so example one. Example two, seemingly not so different than the previous one. So from n is one to infinity of one over n squared. So this is also a p-series. Also a p-series. So this is a p-series with p is what? 2. So does it converge or diverge? Converge. How about this? What does it converge to? What does it converge to? I have no idea. <laughs> right? Actually, we may figure out what it converges to later. Right? You, could, you could figure out what the p-integral converges to. If you have a good memory, you can remember that the p-integral converges to what? 1, right? In this case, because p is 1. So it's 1 over, uh, one over p minus 1 or something like that. Yeah, 1 over p minus 1. So the p-integral converges, and it converges to 1. Because the p-integral converges, the p-series converges. But what does the p-series converge to? Don't know. Don't know. But if you look at the argument that we made, you, you, should, you should be able to tell that it's, basic, that it's between uh, 0 and 2, <laughs> which isn't that helpful. <coughs> okay. So any question about this one? Okay. So then it's trivial to see if a p-series converges. Right? I'm never going to say, I'm never going to write down a p-series a and say, does it converge or diverge? What you're actually going to do is you're going to use it in the section that we're about to about to come to. So any questions about the integral test or p-series? Okay, so then let's write down the general, the general flow here, where we are. Right, so when you, come to a, when you come to a series question, and I say, you know, I might say, use the, use the x test, okay, then what test should you use? Whatever I said, right, you should do what I said. Okay, but if I just say, here's a series, determine its convergence or divergence, so that the choice of test is up to you. Right, you've got to figure out what it is that you're supposed to do. Okay, the first thing that you test is you, you see if it's a geometric series. So if it's geometric, then you use everything about the geometric series. Right? So geometric series with ratio R converges exactly when what? R is less than 1 in absolute value. Okay, so geometric series is like the easiest possible series. Okay, if it's not geometric, then you see if you can use the nth term test for divergence. Okay, so then if you compute the limit of the nth term and the limit of the nth term is not 0, then it diverges. Okay, no more consideration necessary. Okay. <coughs> now, that's as opposed to like this example. So what is the limit of the nth term in the, in the harmonic series? The limit of the nth term is zero. So what can the nth term test for divergence tell you? N tells you nothing at all. Right? The limit of the nth term is zero, so you can't, si you can't, the nth term test for divergence doesn't tell you anything. Okay, so then if you can't use the nth term test for divergence, now you, you consider, can I use the integral test? Right, so really, the integral test requires a, even one more requirement. So then what you do is you consider the corresponding function. Is that function continuous, positive, and decreasing? Then you can use the integral test. But there's an uns unspoken requirement that is, wait a minute, can I actually integrate that? Right, do I know how to integrate that? Right, if the answer is no, if you don't know how to integrate that, the, the corresponding function, then you can't use the integral test. Right, you can't effectively use the integral test. You could show me that you could, hypothetically, but then you actually can't, right? Okay, so does everybody see the general flow? Okay, now we're in section 9.4. <coughs> okay, and this is one of the more important sections. So 9.4, 
comparison, comparison. of series. <clears throat> so, last section, the integral test, we basically did the following. It was like we had this sort of dynamic. I give you a series and you say, hey, I'm reminded of that integral. So I'm going to compare the series to this integral. Okay, so you were comparing these two things. Now the section is going to be, I'm going to give you a series and you're going to say, hey, this series reminds me of that series, and this one converges, therefore that one converges. Or, this series reminds me of that series, and this one diverges, so that one diverges. So I'm going to give you a series, and then you're going to use various means to come up with a, with a second series, a second series that you know how to deal with. Okay, you don't know how to deal directly with the series I gave you, but you can compare it to this other one that you can deal with, and then make a conclusion about the first one. Okay, so does everybody see how it works, how it's going to work? Okay, <coughs> so the first thing is this, the direct comparison test. <coughs> the direct comparison test. So suppose... that 0 is less than a n is less than or equal to b n. That is to say, we have two positive sequences, a n and b n, they're both positive, and a n is less than or equal to b n. Right, so you have two positive sequences and you have them in order, all of their terms are orderable. Okay, then, <coughs> two properties, one, if the sum from n is 1 to infinity of bn converges, then what is the conclusion? The sum of an has to converge. Okay, so then... Now, I'll use, I'll use adjectives to sort of make it more clear. If I have two sequences that are positive, a big sequence and a little sequence, if the big sequence converges, then the little sequence has to converge because the big one has to converge to something bigger, and therefore the little, the little one also must converge. Okay, similarly, okay, I, you could take the, exact, the logical opposite of this and say if the sum from n is 1 to infinity of a n diverges, then what must be true? The sum of b n must diverge. Okay, so again, if I use the words big and little, I have two positive sequences, one big and one little. If the little one is so big that it diverges, then the big one must also diverge. Okay, so now let's see why this is the case. <coughs> and this is actually quite easy to show. <coughs> so, <coughs> let SK be A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus all the way up to SK. That is to say that SK is the sequence of partial sums for the little sequence. Or for the little series, I mean to say. First, one. If the sum from n is 1 to infinity of bn is L, which is to say that the big series converges and it converges to L. <coughs> Then there are two properties. First, SK is monotone increasing because it is a sequence it is an increasing sequence because of this. SK plus one is the previous SK plus AK plus one, and AK plus one is positive. Okay, and 
SK is bounded by L. So if the sequence of partial sums for the little se for the little series okay, is monotone and bounded, then what must be true about that sequence? It must converge, and therefore the series must converge. <coughs> So this implies that SK converges, which implies that the series from n, from n is 1 to infinity of AN converges. Okay, so notice, we keep, we keep using this thing over and over and over again. Right, I want to show that something converges, then I construct a sequence, okay, and show that this sequence is monotone and bounded, monotone and bounded, monotone and bounded. For those of you that go on in math, take analysis, or maybe even in physics, and you start talking about these kinds of things, it's always going to be monotone and bounded, monotone and bounded, monotone and bounded. Okay, you're always going to be endeavoring to construct something that's monotone and bounded. Okay, so then second, <coughs> the second argument is just like the first. So I'm not going to make it. Okay, so any question about this one? <coughs> okay, so now let's do an example. Okay, so here's a series from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1. 1 over n squared plus 1. Okay, now, <coughs> here's one thing you could do, okay, but I don't recommend you do it, right? You could use the integral test integral test. You could do it, and then you could do this, right? The integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And then you look at this and you remember, oh yeah, I can show that, that 1 over x squared plus 1 is positive. I can show that it's continuous. I can show that it's decreasing by computing its derivative and showing that the SIGN of that thing is negative everywhere. And then after all of that, you've got to remember the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, which is what? Arctangent. Okay, so then this would be equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of the arctangent of b minus the arctangent of 1. Right, and then you've got to remember, wait a minute, what is the arctangent of 1? That's, uh, what is that, what is that, what is that? So what is it? Pi over 4. And then you've got to remember, wait a minute, what does the arctangent function do as its argument goes to infinity? It goes to... <laughs> pi over 2, good, someone knows. Okay, so this is pi over 2 minus pi over 4. So this, I this altogether would be pi over 4. So then we've sh we showed, right, this, this would not even be close to sufficient to get you credit for this answer, right? You'd have to first show that you could use the integral test and do all that work to show that the integral test can work. Then you have to remember how to actually do this integral. And then you find out that the integral is pi over 4, so the integral converges. So the original series does what? Converges, right? It converges. What does the original series converge to? Who knows, right? But you can still conclude that it converges. So we could have done the whole integral test and it would have taken us a lovely 10 minutes. It would have been great. Okay, but let's not do that. Let's use the direct comparison test. Let's use the direct comparison test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, the original sequence right, is 1 over n squared plus 1. And I'm going to take a new sequence. I think I can make a sequence that is greater than a n, okay, but it's easier for me to consider. So how about this? 1 over something. Okay. Now we need to think about this something. All right, so this is 1 over n squared plus 1. If I want to make another sequence which is greater than a n, then the denominator needs to be what? Bigger? Smaller? What? Smaller, right? Because if you make the, the denominator smaller, then the, the ratio is bigger. Okay, so then how about 1 over n squared, right? Just forget about the 1. Forget about the 1. 
No, you cannot do 1 over n. <laughs> you could, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't help you. <coughs> Sorry? Yeah, so it wouldn't be enough to help you. Okay. So, now, we have that 0 is less than a n is less than or equal to b n. Right, so now I have two positive sequences, and I have the big sequence, b, uh, b n. And the sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, does that converge or does that diverge? It converges. Why does it converge? Because it's a p-series. So it's a p-series with p is 2. So I, I now have the arrangement. I took the original series and said that, well, the original series is the summation of positive terms, and it's less than this series, which converges. Right, so I found a series which is bigger than it and also converges, so what's true about this, the original series? It also converges. So this is a, this is a section of, of the semester where mm, a lot of students start flourishing. Right? Several students, several of you will start flourish, flourishing because you see the idea that, oh, well, okay, uh, I'd rather not. <laughs> right? Especially sort of like the students who are reluctant to do any work. Right? I would rather not really deal with this series. You know, I'd really rather not. And if I just squint my eyes a little bit, then it looks just like that series. And this one converges, so the original one converges. Right? So you sort of just wave your hands a little bit and then voila right? I have a the original one must converge right so and it allows you to avoid using the integral test for example great so any example about this one <coughs> or any question about this example okay so then now he asked a question uh, he asked a question well could I have used could I have used um, 1 over n so let's see what would happen. So the, an the, the answer to the question is over. But if you would have tried bn is 1 over n, then you would have that 0 is less than a n is less than or equal to bn. So you still would have had this. You would have said, I have two positive sequences, and I have a bigger, a bigger sequence. Okay, then you would have said, let's consider this, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Okay, does this converge or diverge? It diverges. So what you would have said is, okay, I ordered the sequences and the bigger one diverges. What does that say about the littler one? Nothing. It doesn't say anything about the, the, the little one. What if the little one diverges? Then the big one, the, the big one also must diverge. Okay, so you have to get them in the proper order. Okay, <coughs> so let's do another one. So, for example, yeah. <coughs> so, for example, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus the square root of n. So I would say this, um, you know, you go through the, go through the machinery, okay? Is it a geometric series? Not geometric. What is the limit of the nth term? Zero, right? Because the denominator is becoming arbitrarily large, so the ratio is going to zero, so can you use the nth term test for a divergence? No, the nth term test makes no conclusion here. Okay, how about can you use the integral test? Okay, so then on the one hand, the answer is yes, I could use the integral test because the corresponding function would be continuous and positive and decreasing. But on the other hand, you need to ask yourself, would you be able to integrate that? And the answer is probably not, right? Off the top of my head, I can't think of how to integrate it. Okay, so integral test is right out. So then what shall we do? 
probably the one that we're currently talking about, the direct comparison test, right? Okay, so now <coughs> this is the way at least that I think about it. So let's consider, let's consider 1 over n plus the square root of n. What is the most dominant term in the denominator? What is the most significant term? n is the most significant term because, for example, when n is 100, what's the square root of n? 10, which is a lot less than 100. So how about when n is 10,000? What's the square root of n? 100, right? So the most dominant term is n. So, <coughs> to me, this behaves like in a sense, the sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n. That's ignoring the square root of n. Okay, so now, if in my brain I'm trying to make this connection that it behaves like this series, well, this series is so famous it even has a name. What's its name? The harmonic series. Okay, the harmonic series, which also happens to be a p-series with p as 1. In either case, you should know that the harmonic series does what? It diverges. So, in my, in, you know, in my brain, I'm sort of constructing this idea. I think the original series diverges. I think the original series diverges. So, if I think that this one diverges, then I need to come up with something that is easy to say it diverges and is smaller than that one. Right? It has to be a series which is smaller than that one because if I can find a series that's smaller than that one and it diverges, then the original series, this big series, must also diverge. Okay. <coughs> so the way it goes is like this. First, n plus the square root of n. Okay. n plus the square root of n. Well, that is less than or equal to n plus n. Okay. <coughs> this, of course, is for n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so then this is saying n plus the square root of n is less than or equal to 2n. So now I can compute the reciprocals of both sides. What happens to the direction of the inequality when you take reciprocals? It reverses. So this is 1 over n plus the square root of n is greater than or equal to uh, 1 over 2n. Okay, and then now notice that both of these are positive. Both of these are positive. <coughs> so if I could show if I could show that the series of this one diverges, if the series of the green box diverges, then the series of, of the original of the original thing must also diverge. So the sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n is equal to, I can factor out the 1 half and say that's 1 half the sum from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which diverges because it's harmonic. So, the series from n is 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus the square root of n must also diverge by the direct comparison test. Okay, so any question about the way the direct comparison test works? So it requires a little bit of mm, kung fu, I would say, something like that, right? Because you have to be able to look at a series and make a, make a reasoned judgment about, okay, of all of the terms, which ones are the most important? So then I'll drop all the ones that aren't important. Okay, drop all the ones that aren't important. And then make another, a second series that is either bigger or smaller as necessary. Right? If you think that it diverges, then you need to find a series which is smaller. If you think that it converges, then you need to find a series which is bigger. Okay, so any question about the direct comparison test and how it's used? Okay, so a much easier test to use is the next one, <coughs> logically. At least I find, I find that students 
have more success gaining full credit on a question using this test. Okay, so this is called the limit comparison test. Comparison. Okay, so then, given given two series, uh, two sequences, A n which is positive and B n which is positive, so given two positive sequences, <coughs> if several requirements, one, the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n exists. Okay, so I'm going to say it like this, is equal to L. That is to say, it exists and equal to L. Two, L is positive. So first off, right, a n and b n themselves are positive. Okay, so all of the ratios a n over b n are positive. But what might happen? What might happen to l? L might actually be what equal to zero, right? The limit of the ratio might be zero, even if all the terms in the ratio are positive. So what I'm saying is that we have two sequences. Okay, the limit of their ratio. I exists and is positive and third L is finite and so I'm so positive infinity does not count then these two series the sum from n is 1 to infinity of a n and the sum from n is 1 to infinity of b n both converge or both, or both diverge. Okay, so then, <coughs> this, is, this is similar to the integral test, right, the previous test. The way it will go is I will give you a series, and then you will say, well, I'm not really sure what that series does, but it looks like this other series, and I know what that series does. So then, you, you compute a limit, you say, ah, I have determined that the limit is, is positive, it exists and is positive and is finite, so both of these series must do the same thing. Okay, so then for that reason I know what the original series does. Okay, so does everybody understand the, the flow of the argument? <coughs> okay, so then let's show that this is true. So, <coughs> let's assume that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n is L. Okay, then there is an index n such that 0 is less than a n over b n is less than L plus 1. <coughs> In fact, let's just make this epsilon for any positive epsilon because that's what it means for the limit to exist. Okay, that is to say that if it converges to L, then there must be some time... Okay, and this is for N greater than n. There must be some time, capital N, that after that time, the sequence is within epsilon of the limit, L. It has to get that close for any epsilon. <coughs> then, right, I can take this sequence of inequalities, okay, and multiply everything by, a, by an. So what is, or excuse me, by bn. What is zero multiplied by bn? Well, it's zero is less than a n is less than l plus epsilon multiplied by b n. 
<coughs> okay, now suppose that Bn, the summation of Bn, converges. Okay, that is to say, suppose that this, this converges. Then what about this constant multiplied by Bn? Does it converge? Yes, it converges. Okay, so then you have two positive sequences. The bigger one converges. What about this one? Also converges by the direct comparison test. Then the sum from n is 1 to infinity of a n converges by the direct comparison test. On the other hand, Suppose that the sum from n is 1 to infinity of a n diverges. That is to say, we have two positive sequences. Okay, and they are ordered like so. And the smaller one diverges. Then what must be true about this one? It diverges by direct comparison. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so any question about this? Okay, so then that's all we have time for today. So we'll do our first example of the limit comparison test on Thursday. Thank you. <coughs>